the service even now as we begin to the very end all through to the end we pray that the spirit of a living God shall move in this sanctuary in the name of Jesus we pray for spirit anointed worship in the name of the Lord we pray dear Lord that you would open even our ears and our spirit ears to hear what the spirit of a living God has to say we pray that you may open our eyes Lord in the name of the Lord we pray that this day, Lord, we shall be transformed, we shall be changed, we shall be conformed even to the image of Christ in the name of Jesus. Mold us this afternoon, Lord. You are the potter and we are the clay. So therefore, we ask you, Lord, to make us in your own image in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the servant of God, even as she comes to bring forth the word, that, Lord, she shall do so in power, O oh God not with the eloquence of men, but Lord, in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Father, may you give her utterance by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray, dear Lord, that your glory shall be even upon this sanctuary in the name of Jesus Christ. So Lord, may our hearts, Lord, be open to receive today. Take away, Lord, every hardness that would be in our hearts, that would hinder your word from coming through, O oh God, and bringing forth fruit in our lives in the name of the Lord, and give us hearts of flesh, Lord, hearts, Lord, that shall receive and hearken even unto your word, that it may bear fruit in each and every one of us. Would you move, Spirit of a living God, in the service today? We pray for healings to take place, miracles, signs and wonders, even to manifest in the name of Jesus. So we thank you today, Lord, and we bless you. How we ask, Lord, that you may just glorify yourself, glorify yourself in this uh, interdenominational service this afternoon in the name of the Lord. And Lord, even as we go into a time of worshiping and praising you, we pray, dear Lord, that you would find it fit to come and dwell in the praises that we bring up unto you in the name of Jesus. So we praise you, Lord. We worship you and we honor your holy name. And everybody say hallelujah. Amen. So worshipers, we welcome you. Hallelujah. Let's kind of be up on our feet standing as we get into a moment of worship this afternoon. We want to declare that indeed God reigns in our lives. Come on somebody, why don't you raise a voice in the house today? We thank you, Jesus, Lord. We magnify your name today, Lord. We magnify your name, O oh God. Indeed, we've searched all over the world. All over the world, we found nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord.
Come on, if you know that there is nobody like the Lord, you will put your hands together for the Lord. We give you praise. We love you, Jesus. Indeed, there is no one like you, O oh God. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give him some praise? Yeah. Are you ready to give him some praise? Yeah. Why don't you put your hands together for the Lord?
Yes, indeed. The favor, the peace, the healing, the power, the anointing of the Lord is coming down. Come on, give the Lord a shout this afternoon. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, worshipers and the don't come on, appreciate them for the good job. The Lord bless you. You may take your seats. All right, please allow me to just bring you a few reminders. Now, our next monthly interdenominational service will be on Sunday, the 9th of September. All right, please take note of that. September from 2 p.m. right here. And why in September? Uh, because we have the August conference, uh, the August annual conference starting on Sunday the 12th of August. Uh, it goes all the way to the 18th of August 2018 and it's going to be right here. So uh, we have the next interdenominational service on the 9th of September because our August conference starts on the 12th of August and goes all the way to the 18th of August. Now, uh, you're kindly requested to just continue preparing for that. Uh, pray for it, even as you invite others, uh, invite your colleagues in your workplaces, invite your neighbors, um, invite even your enemies so that they can come and be transformed um, and, and be in connection with that. I think the ushers have some flyers that they'll be dishing out. And as they do that, I would also like to just remind you that uh, we are meeting every Saturday for prayers from 10 to 12, every Saturday for prayers as we push uh, in preparation for the conference. Now, you're also requested to visit our information desk uh, for any inquiries that you might have and to purchase uh, any of our materials. That includes messages that have been preached in this sanctuary, as well as books that have been authored uh, by the founder of the ministry, Evangelist Teresa Wairimo. For the sake of the visitors, if there are any visitors, the information desk is uh, on the eastern wing, on the walkway, as, as you come into the sanctuary. Uh, I believe the technical team has some on-screen announcements. you technical team and I know that you may not understand but that's a lot of work that goes into that so technical team thank you for the good work that you're doing so time for ministration now and we will have the men's team uh, come and minister to the Lord
Amen. Amen. And yes, please appreciate the men. Yes, great indeed is the Lord's mercy, His loving kindness, and His grace towards you and I. That's why we're here today, isn't it? Amen. The Lord bless you. So time now for us to hear the word of God and uh, to bring the word is one that we love, one that we honor, a prophet in this nation, a prophet to the nations, one that is dear to us. I'd like to ask us to stand up as we receive the founder of Faith Evangelistic <laughs> Ministry, our mom. Come on, appreciate the woman of God. Appreciate her. Isn't she looking elegant? Appreciate her. Wow, put your those hands together and make a shout of praise in the house. King of kings. Wow, come on, make a shout. Woo! Woo! Amen. Amen. Greet two people, shake their hands if they want. Don't, don't, don't be fussing. Just, just tell them, may I? Ask them, did you, did you have a good day? Don't try to study their mood. Just tell them, you know, I, you're looking good. You're just looking great. All right. Wow. And after that, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Your precious, wonderful people. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you keeping? I'm trying to gather myself together. Can I not? What I'm saying is putting yourself together now to your family, your family, All right. It is such wonderful times for us this afternoon to come together. For a second service. Thank you for your prayers while I was in Germany. And I want to particularly send you love and greetings from our father, Pastor Reinhard Bonke. Apparently, he did not know I was in Germany. But he wrote me the most powerful letter, a note that a, a, a daughter can receive from her father. About two, two or three pages. Help me to honor my spiritual father. Amen. Amen. He deserves honor. So I thank God because I am a woman under authority. In that case, I'm suggesting. Should you have a problem, you can directly contact my father. Otherwise, if you don't have a problem, let's love one another, okay? So it's good to see every one of you. I need to thank God for the ministers in the house. Would you all stand? The ordained ministers, the other ministers, all of you stand together. We thank God so much for you. We honor God. Thank you, thank you for loving God. Our our pastors from our pastors fellowship would you all stand we love you pastors so very much thank you so much for allowing us to speak into your lives you are great we've been together this is I think this is the is the eighth year, Pastor Joshua? Eight years. Thank you for understanding the power of partnership. And thank you as you partner with us and with me in this ministry. God will also in return raise partners to partner with you. May the Lord bless you, increase you, and expand you. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter, Pastor Carol. We thank God for your dedication, your 
service to this ministry. Asante mchungaji mchungaji Peter vile vile pamoja na mkeo kwa ajili ya kujitoa mno katika huduma huu na namna mmehudumu katika huduma huu. Even in my own personal life your guidance your your care and your advices. Hata katika maisha yangu binafsi alienu ya ushauri na kunijali na kuniongoza vile vile natambua hiyo. And together I ask all the Ezra project uh, the, those who are uh, in the Ezra project to stand. Na wote waliomo katika mradi wa Ezra na wasi tukaweze kusimama. We thank God for every one of you. Tashukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya kila mmoja wenu. In the project in Ezra project. Katika mradi huu wa Ezra. Thank you that you have put your hands and your minds to work for this phase number 2. Asante mno maana mmeweka mikono yenu na nia yenu kuweza kufanya kazi katika mradi huu wa Ezra sura yake ya pili. We know in a few days we are starting before even we start the conference. Najua kwa siku chache zijazo tutaanza mradi huu hata kabla ya kongamano kuanza. And uh, I know you want Pastor Peter to let these people know that this is the last time they are using those bathrooms on that side. Is that so? Na mchungaji Peter ungependa watu wajue kwamba upande ule wa msalani ni mara yenu ya mwisho siku ya leo kutumia kutumia huduma za upande huu mwingine we are going to bring them down tutazibomoa vyo vya kule tutaweza kuvibomoa vyote so it is good to prepare you psychologically basi ni vyema kisaikolojia tuweze kuandaa because people have attachment with anything maana watu wanakuwa na, na uzoefu wa kushikamanika na kitu chochote kile we don't want you gaiga ni mwana ni brother is your career we were not even told. Hata tukuambiwa. We have prepared you. Tunawaanda. That God is taking us to the next level. Kwamba Bwana anatupeleka katika kimo kipatacho. So they were good for until this season. Basi jo vile vilikuwa ni vyema hadi tu kufikia msimu huu. But they will not be good for the season to come. Lakini kwa msimu ujao vyo hivyo vita kuwa vya vizuri ama vya maana. It is not a demotion is a promotion. Put your hands together for Jesus. Sio kuporomosha katika cheo bali ni kupanda team. Asante ni mno kila mmoja wenu. Thank you so much Ezra team. Asante mno kikundi cha Ezra. I'm sure you are praying for the conference that is round the corner. Na mimi nyote mnaombea kongamano ambayo karibu kuja. We are greatly honored and before I say the conference your brothers are in the house would you stand Na kabla niseme kaka zenu wamo katika nyumba hii tafadhali ni tusimame God bless you so much Mungu abariki mno It's great to see you Ni vyema kuwaona All the political class may the Lord bless you Wote waliomo katika nyanja ya kisiasa Mungu abariki We appreciate you we love you and we pray for you Tuwatambua tunawapenda na tunawaombea I know this season you are all praying for Senator Betty we sorted out actually the the mambos in the morning we sorted it out najua kila mmoja anaomba senator beta subi ya tuko na mazungumzo kiasi and now she understands that it is dangerous to have potholes when the president is coming in 2 3 weeks sasa ameitambua kwamba ni ni jambo la hatari mno kuwa 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 na mashimo barabarani wakati rais anakuja kwa majuma machache ajayo because senator i'll prepare him psychologically we menyara doka we mutaro ha we beti ni alegire guthondeka what i'm saying is that <laughs> senator beti is doing a great job and they are going to get started and make sure together with my governor they have done a good job put your hands together appreciate senator beti tupige makofi senator beti pamoja na governor watahakikisha wamefanya kazi njema our conference is round the corner kongamano yetu imewadia we are so excited to have bishop macredon coming to the nation of kenya tumesisimka mno kuwa na na astof macredon akija katika taifa la kenya Thank you so much for choosing to come. Askofa asante mno kwa kuchagua kuja. And we know that you're coming with a team from your church. Na tunajua unakuja na kikundi kutoka kanisani mwanu. We are so blessed once again to have uh, Robert Redon, the author of God's Generals coming to be with us. Tumebarikiwa vile vile kwa na Robert Redon ambaye ni mwandishi wa kitabu cha We are blessed to have Pastor Samihin. Tumebarikiwa kwa na mchungaji Samihin. Prophet David. Na bid David from Sweden and Prophet Stephen from United Kingdom. Kutoka Sweden na B Stephen kutoka Uingereza. Our families from the Netherlands and from UK from the US all over the world they Jamie, are coming together. Jamii zetu kutoka kila mbali ulimwenguni Uholanzi na kokote kule wanakuja Kenya. This is a, a season when we gather as children together we sit under the canopy of the grace of God. Huu ni msimu ambao tunakusanyika pamoja kama wana tunaketi katika stara ya uwepo wa Mungu. Our president will be joining us on Sunday service on right. the 12th on the is it 12th on the 12th Rais wote atakuwa naungana nasi katika ibada ya Jumapili tarehe 12 
And I tell you, he'll be here exactly. By the way, we don't have two services uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. I prayed and I have felt God put in my heart. We combine the service together. We will have one, more, one service so we can have a great celebration and have lunch together, all of us. So our service will start at 10. And I want you to notice that actually the president will be arriving exactly at 10 o'clock. So let's make sure we come way before. Thank God that this, uh, the, that Sunday there will be no preserving of seats. People will come as early as they can and you sit where you want. No, no, no. I think uh, Minister Peter English, if it teaches me right, you can sit where you want. There will be, of course, you can. <laughs> no, Nagateka, that one is where the president will sit, so you can help yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely there will be some, 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 some people helping us with that. I don't want that to be told. Mom said when we sit down, nobody should wake us up. Yeah, there will be a little bit, some few protocol, you know. Uh, so we thank God. So we are going to have lunch. All our kitchen people, would you all stand? All the people who serve us in the kitchen. All the kitchen moms, Ms. Jiguna and her team, all of you, wherever you are, up the back on it. Mrs. Jaggi, all of you, I want to take this opportunity from this platform and appreciate you for your generous, your kindness. You will be cooking for us for five days. They will be serving us lunch every single day during the conference. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. And we will keep praying for you that God will give you strength so that you can do a good job. If you love them, come on. If you are sitting next to them, just shake their hands and tell them, thank you very much. There might be another thing. I have tried to look at how we could do this. Like how we could bring the children and it seems like it will be very challenging. And I feel, I feel strongly for the security of our children. Like up where they meet, the kitchen mothers will be using most of that space to cook. The entire parking space will be used for extensions of tents and the people who will come late. I want to kindly request if your auntie could stay with the kids that particular Sunday, if you don't mind. Your uncle, your grandmother, the grandmother can come from the village it's in Agas and she can read the Bible story. You can set them to watch live on Facebook. Even Shosho can do that. Just because, so we, we, we also want to make sure, like, uh, because the construction will have started and there will be too many people. So let the kids that day stay home. And all the partners are coming in. So I personally have one day with the Sunday school children. I will just go and teach in the Sunday school. And I will explain to them. 
So don't worry about that. Wonderful. So we are so excited to be starting to put things together. Our deputy president will also be joining us. Amen. We are also extending our invitation to our governor and the leadership of this nation. We believe it's a time of restoration and we believe it's time for us to bless our nation. All right. Just as I want to receive the, the offerings and uh, do you want to give don't give me a stone face. Smile. Encourage me. So what I want to... Yes, are you sad? Are you sad? Are you hungry? Oh, you're good. We're going to dine and feed from the word of God. So get prepared. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. And uh, if you want to give, there's every information you need on the board. And we ask that God will minister to you. And you... Let's say a prayer, our Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the gifts of your people. As that God, you bless them. Thank you for teaching us the principles of the kingdom of God concerning giving and receiving. We are not giving anything that you have not given us. Everything we hold today, even the breath of life, it's a gift from God. So we give you thanks. We bless you, Father. Should we have any person in our midst? Maybe they wanted to give and they don't have anything to give. Bless them that they will share the joy of giving and receiving with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I send the ashes to come to you, you know, my baby gift has done yet another song. And this song is so powerful, you need to listen to it. And uh, I thank God, I'm so proud of our babies in, from Kikambara. And what God is doing through the men in their lives. As we send the ashes to come to you, I listened to this song and I felt I wanted you to hear this song. A beautiful, beautiful song. And I want you, church, to know once the CD and all the music has been put in place. We will be getting them and giving them gifts for Christmas for what? To encourage our babies. So help me welcome gift. Receive gift as a gift from the Lord. Decide receive gift as a gift from God. Come on, baby. Come up, come up, come up. Come on, baby. Thank you. May God bless you. We have the song. Nani kiulizo siungami 
nikesija sauti uhu nikinita kwa ukarimu kumbeni Yesu kumbeni Yesu Mungu mwenye huruma na yeye ndo tosha yeye ndo tosha Mungu mwenye huruma na nikimala kufala na pata nikimala mashombo na pata na nikimala chakuria na pata nikimala chochosi na pata i say nimepata tosha unanipona hetosha the gift. gift. Woo, come on, appreciate the gift. Get a gift. <laughs> you know, you, you know my baby is gift and Santa. Joe and Uncle gift and Santa. They did for their mother one of the most beautiful gazebos. The one of Makuti with a coastal touch. Let me appreciate my babies. Did you hear? Regarding the devil has been divorced. <laughs> I was listening to the song. The divorce Talaka. certificate has been signed Talaka and submitted to the devil. Na kwa Put your hands together one more time for the gift. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank Asante. you, my babies. You are just amazing. Asante wanangu ma, enyini wajabu mno. I want to say this, so if God should touch you to sponsor or do anything for the conference, 
please come and see the ministers and let us know what you'd want to do. Ngependa usema hivi wapo Bwana atakuguza kwamba ukaweze kufanya lolote lile kwa ajili ya kongamano. Njoo ukaone wahudu mahapo na waelezeni kipi ambacho ungelipenda kufanya. There's anything you'd want to bless us with for the for that function and for the days anything you want to specifically do for the ministry please see one of us one see the ministers chochote kile ambacho ungelipenda kufanya specially ama hususan kwa ajili ya kongamano njoo kaone wa huduma go straight to the word of god this afternoon ende katika neno la mungu adhuri ya leo allow me to go to the book of exodus chapter 32 niruhusu niende katika kitabu cha kutoka kutoka dala 32 this morning minister habert preached of course he touched on the message that I'm going to speak. But I thank God that uh, we, the word of God is good. I want us to check a few things from uh, from the book of Exodus the 32 chapter. I'll be picking on a few and a few verses. And then we are going to pray together. On the 4th of uh, of the uh, in April, the month of April 2018. From this platform I shared a message. God's God how God God divinely ordered the wealth of the of the of the wicked uh, the wealth of the Egyptians to get into the hands of the uh, the children of Israel. Namna Mungu alipanga katika hali ya kiungo kwamba mali ya Wamisri ikajipate katika katika mikononi mwa wana wa Israeli. And as they were coming out of Egypt. Walipokuwa kiondoka Misri. God handed over the wealth to them. Mungu akawapa mali yale kwao. We checked on the Exodus chapter 11 God said to Moses. Tukaangalia katika kutoka sura 11 Mungu akimwambia Musa. Let every man and every woman Wacha kila mwanaume na kila mwanamke. Ask their neighbors. Akawa azima majirani wao. For articles of silver gold. Kwa vyombo vya fedha na dhahabu. And the Bible says and God granted favor with the, to the children of Israel. Na Biblia inasema kwamba na Mungu akawapa kibali wana wa Israeli. In the sight of the Egyptians. Machoni pa wana wa wa, wa Kimisri. What do I want to say? When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they carried tons of gold which had been handed over to them. But today I want us to look at something. Because I also said when a nation we come into a time of being blessed, in the prophetic word I gave in January, that we need to be very 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 careful in the days of grace. So today I want us to look at what did they do with the wealth that was divinely given to them by God. Today I want us to learn something how to handle the blessings of God I want us to share on how to handle the blessings of God. We should never ever assume or take the grace of God for granted. I know the last message I spoke from this platform I spoke on grace. I wanted to teach from Exodus uh, chapter 32. But the Holy Spirit sp spoke to me to submit the mission the message on grace. At the time I did not understand. But now I understand it better. What I want to speak to us. As you journey to the promised land. Before reaching to your destination which is going to be the land of Canaan. There are several stages and stop over I can as well prepare you right now because you don't just stand and you bounce into Canaan. It is a journey. In this journey there are obstacles, there are hindrances and there are many stop overs and many stages. Na safari hii kuna vizuizi vingi, kuna vizingiti vingi na kuna vituo vingi. From Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 32. Kutoka katika kutoka 32. Before Moses ascended to the mountain of uh, to 
go and meet with God. Kabla Musa akwe katika bulima kwenda kutana na Mungu. He appointed some leadership. Aliteua uongozi so that while he has go has gone to meet with God. Ili kwamba wakati atakuwa amekwea kwenda kukutana na Mungu. There will be a mature person, responsible person. Kutakuwa na mtu mkomavu, mtu ambaye anajibika. To speak into the people's lives. Kuweza kunena katika maisha ya watu. To protect them and give them guidance. Kuweza kuhakika na kuwapa mwelekeo. Moses appointed his own brother Aaron. Basi Musa kamteua kakaye Aaron. And as Moses now was ascending to the mountain to meet with God. Wakati Musa alikuwa sasa yuko kwea mlimani kwenda kutana na Mungu. Moses climbed to Mount Sinai. Musa akakwea mlima Sinai. And while he was there, na alipokuwa kule mlimani, the people were left under the leadership of Aaron. Watu wakaachwa chini ya uongozi wa Aaron. The Bible says, Biblia sema hivi, something that surprises me and concerns me. Kitu ambacho kinanishangaza mno na kinaniguza mno. The people saw Watu waliona it means they were concerned and they were watching Kumaanisha kwamba walikuwa wahusika mno walikuwa wanatazama vile The people saw that Moses had overstayed Watu waliona kwamba Musa amekawia kule mlimani In other words he has stayed longer than they expected Kwa maneno mengine alikuwa amekaa zaidi namna walivyotarajia So this bunch of people who had been given tons of wealth gathered together Basi kikundi cha hiki cha watu ambao kilikuwa kimepewa mali nyingi na matani ya mali nyingi The wealth and all things that they did not deserve basi mali nyingi ambayo na hata na vitu ambavyo hawakustahili kuwa navyo they gathered themselves together around this man the leader who is a priest as well Aaron basi wakakusanya vitu hivi mbele ya kiongozi wao ambaye vile vile alikuwa ni kuhani Haruni and they said to him na wakamwambia hivi you may please note this tafadhali tabua hili the people suggested to Aaron watu wakamtolea wazo Haruni come make us gods kuja ututengenezee miungu who will go before us ambaye atatutangulia sisi for we do not know what has happened to moses maana kwake musa tujui ni yapi ametendekea who brought us from egypt yule aliyetutoa kule misri can i say to us today je naizoaambia leo hivi i am so surprised when i study the word of god nashangazwa mno ninapostudy neno la mungu about this compromise leadership of aaron kuhusu uongozi wa haruna ambao ulikuwa ni wa kuyumba yumba instead of aaron speaking to the people badala ya haruna kuanenea watu the people spoke to him ikafanyika kwa maana watu ambao alimsumbua haruna leadership you must be very 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 careful katika uongozi unapaswa kuwa mwangalifu mno if god gives you an assignment iwapo mungu atakupa jukumu never stand before god and give an excuse the people usiwahi simama mbele ya mungu katoa sababu kwamba ni watu that's why god had picks leadership ndiposa mungu teua uongozi so now we see the assignment is not with the people particularly god through moses has assigned aaron basi tunaona sasa jukumu sio kwa watu bali ni kwa aruna ambaye ameteuliwa na mungu kupitia Musa because everybody cannot be a leader at the same time god picks one at a time maana sio kila mtu anaweza kufanyika kiongozi kwa wakati mmoja mungu tawa mmoja baada ya mwingine so god wanted guidance to give them aaron to give the people guidance basi mungu alihitaji kwa alihitaji kwamba aruna kaweze kupatia watu muongozo instead of aaron telling the people badala ya aruni kuongoza watu what they needed to know badala kuambia watu kile ambacho wanapaswa kujua the people told him what he needed to do for them watu walimwambia kile ambacho walipaswa kuwafanyia wao what i see here i see compromise kile naona hapa naona hali ya kuyumba yumba and i see that Aaron stooped down na naona Haruna alijilunisha mno to where the people were hadi mahali watu walikuwa instead of standing up badala yeye kuinuka to take the people to where he was na kuelekea watu mahali ambapo yeye alikuwa can i say that again because this house they are leaders wacha niseme tena maana katika nyumba hii kunao viongozi leadership is not people taking you down basi uongozi sio watu kukuvu Leadership is you taking them up. Uongozi ni wewe kuwapeleka juu. So now we see here there's already a mess. Basi hapa tunaona kuna utata kuna shida. So Aaron had no no more you know he couldn't give people direction. Basi Haruna angeliweza kuwapa watu mwelekeo wa muongozo tena. Look at when he opens his mouth to speak what he says. Hebu tazama anapofungua kinywa chake kunena ni yapi anayosema. He asked the people to take off the golden earrings. Anawaambia watu wakatoe vipuli vyao vya dhahabu. Get all the gold earrings from your wives. Akasema watupateni vipuli vyote vya dhahabu toka kwa wanawake. From your sons and from your daughters. Toka kwa wana wenu na binti zenu. Bring them to me. Nileteni vitu vyote. Ooh. 
Are you watching this with me? Let me give you a few tips on leadership. This is not a leadership seminar. But I'm going to give you some few tips because these tips you may apply them in your business. A good leader is a good communicator and a good organizer. A good leader must be able to motivate the people. A good leader must be able to delegate. You don't take all responsibility and heap it on yourself. You must be able to delegate. A good leader must be, must be worth trust. Someone who can be trusted. A good leader is a man of his word. Your yes should be yes. And your no should be no. A good leader must be responsible. A good leader never asks people to do what you yourself cannot do. A good leader must be stable and grounded. In other words, a good leader must be able to stand ground even if you have to stand by yourself, stand. A good leader must be countable. A good leader is not a man pleaser. But a good leader does that which is right. Despite the circumstances. A good leader does not hunt for popular votes. Because a good leader is confident enough. A good leader is an honest man. And a person of integrity. A good leader is one who is committed to the cause. Somebody persistent and very passionate. A good leader is one who communicates the truth in love. A good leader is a decision maker. A good leader is the one who knows how to delegate and empower others. A good leader is creative and innovative. A good leader must be careful to receive a feedback. Don't build a kingdom for yourself somewhere. Get a feedback as to what is happening on the ground. A good leader is consistent and is effective. A good leader keeps a right positive attitude at all times. Even when things are so bad, you've got to keep a positive attitude. We all know and we all say a good leader leads by example. A good leader is also a good listener. And I also want you to know also a good leader is slow to anger. I have given you 23 tips. So now what I want to say this is not a seminar for leadership, but, but I would love us to have a seminar on leadership. These are just tips. 
And these tips, I'm also personally working on them. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on them. The reason I brought this forward is because when I was checking at the leadership of Aaron, I found it wanting. He, he did not display the skills of a leader. So back to my text. So the people got themselves together and they took all the stuff that they had on them. And they brought them, they brought them to Aaron. He took those things, those items, and the gold that was given him into his hands. Verse 4 is the saddest verse about the story of Aaron. He made that gold into an idol. In the shape of a golden calf. Then after he had done that, then he told the people, these are your gods which brought you from Egypt. Seriously, Aaron? Are you kidding me now? Those are the gods that brought you out of Egypt? There is a problem when your eyes are being blinded, you lose sight and you don't ever recognize the hand of God in your life. The day you dare think it is by your own might and by your own power that you are where you are, give me a break. Look at this corrupt uh, corrupt leadership. Things are even getting worse. After Aaron had made a god, the so-called golden calf, how many know any time you have a god, you must have an altar to put the God. An altar must be elevated ground at all times. Meaning that Aaron elevated a certain ground. He raised an altar in front of the golden calf. And he told the people, tomorrow there shall be a feast. We're going to do a celebration to honor the new gods that have arrived. And the Bible says the next day, people rose up in the morning. Oh, they were hyped up. They were all hyped up. They woke up earlier than usual so that they could go and sacrifice to the new idol. A burnt offering and another one which they called a fellowship offering. So they knew how to make a chama of fellowship. But remember, this fellowship is anti-God. Moses is our, Aaron is our man. Leave this mad man who went to the mountain. We don't know if he died in the mountain. We have new arrivals. And we want them to go ahead of us. So people got there to meet their gods. So after they had done what they needed to do, they sacrificed. And after that, they had a party. The Bible says they ate and they drank. I submit to you today uh, the children of Israel seems to have very short memories. 
Have they forgotten? Kenya, Kenya, we better not become like the children of Israel. Short memories. We forget. May God help us. May God help us. They forgot that God had given them great deliverance when they came from out of Egypt. Because remember, we saw in Exodus chapter number 3 how God spoke to Moses and said, Indeed, I have seen the miseries and the affliction of my people in Egypt. And I have heard their cry in their slavery. And I'm concerned about their suffering. God said, I'm, have come to rescue them from the Egyptians and bring them to the land into a spacious land a land that flows with milk and honey and God was specifically said actually it is the land of the Canaanites so remember how God picked up Moses to send him to King Pharaoh to get the children of Israel out of and take them into and God made a covenant that I will be with you. When we get to heaven, if Aaron made it, I have a question for him. Was the golden calf image the best you could give the children of Israel? As wages for serving for whole four. 430 years that was short exchanging the people so God uh, now Aaron is now now you know he's a priest he's a father he's a man he has a popular vote everybody's song is Aaron Aaron remember Remember, while they are even doing all this, God is watching. The merciful, gracious God does not even say anything. But of course, after God persevering and watching what was going on, remember, he is met with, with Moses. He told Moses, Moses, I want you to go and see the people whom you brought from Egypt. They have corrupted themselves. They have turned away from my commandments. They have made themselves an idol in the shape of a golden calf. So they have a new arrival of a God whom they bow before. They have not only bowed before their new God, they have also raised an altar for him and also sacrificed. Oh, Aaron committed some few things that I'm looking at here. Some few mistakes and sins against God. Number one, betrayal of leadership. <coughs> Sorry. Betrayal of leadership. Remember that Moses had picked Aaron and put him in his place to be a leader. Are you seeing the betrayal? God gave Moses the assignment. And after God gave Moses the assignment, when God caused Moses to go and speak with him, he picks his brother Aaron so that he can appoint him and lay hands on him to take his place. But instead of taking his place, we see a big time betrayal. 
Kenyans. Wa Kenya. May God teach us to be faithful in friendships. Basi Mungu akatufunza tuwe waaminifu katika urafiki. May God teach us never to betray relationships. Basi Mungu akatusaidia kwamba tusiweze saliti uhusiano. The second mistake I see with Aaron. Ya kosa la pili ambalo namuona na Aaron. He disobeyed God. Alimkaidi Mungu. By misleading the people. Kwa kuongoza watu, kwa kuwapotosha watu. Are you seeing that with me? The third mistake he made. He asked to receive gold from the people. If God wanted to give Aaron this gold, God would not have asked the people to knock at the doors of the Egyptians and ask for it. God would have asked Aaron to go and get it. So Aaron is going against God in everything. In every After misleading them, then they bring the gold to him. He makes a golden calf. And after making the calf, he introduces that calf to the people as their new God. The fifth thing, he raises up an altar to a strange image which he did not even understand. The sixth thing, he begged the people to bow and worship it. The seventh mistake, he also asked people to bring a sacrifice. The eighth thing, he declared, uh, he added to the calendar another day of celebration. Remember, Aaron is dealing with people whom God was their everything. So he even interferes with the calendar of God and he says, we're going to come up with a day of celebration. And I tell you the, th the ninth thing, he made a huge party a celebration. Church, I have an, a question for you. Allow me to pose a question to you. What is an idol? Yes, an What's an idol? An idol is an image or a material or even any kind of object that a human, a human being makes and consider it divine and worships it. In the Bible, we see much of idols referred to idolatry. You know, in the Old Testament, we see a lot of, uh, of idol worship and all that. But in the New Testament, it's not too much. Because when we look at the history in Asia Minor among the Hittites and the Canaanites, even among the Greeks and the Romans, in their religions and also in their culture there was a lot of idol worship. Now we are seeing compromised leadership. And remember in the book of Deuteronomy the fifth chapter God commanded the children of Israel you shall have no other gods before me. And God told them specifically you shall not make yourself a carved image in any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or anything that is on earth and beneath even under the waters they were commanded and I tell you I don't want to speak about the, the, the Judaism but I tell you there are a few things we need to know about that 
kuhusu Judaism lakini kuna baada ya mambo mengi ambayo tunapaswa kujua kuhusu. So when we look at Exodus chapter 31. Basi tunapata zama kutoka 31. Because I have stepped straight to Exodus chapter 32. Maana nimeingia tayari katika kutoka 32. The Bible says when God had finished or ended up speaking to Moses. Nilasa wakati Mungu alikuwa ametamatisha kunena na Musa. On Mount Sinai. He gave Moses two tablet stones as a testimony. Basi akapatia Musa vipande viwili vya mawe kama ushuhuda made of stone. Bali ilikuwa imetengenezwa kwa mawe. And written by God's finger himself. Bali vilikuwa vimeandikwa na kidole cha Mungu mwenyewe. Though God had commanded Moses, alikuwa ameamuru Musa kusema, You shall not make yourself an idol. Kwamba mtajitengenezea sanamu. Neither serve other gods or worship them. Ama kuhudumia ama kuabudu miungu nyingine. Aaron has done exactly contrary to what God had commanded them not to do. Yari Aaron amefanya kinyume na kile ambacho Mungu aliwaonya wasifanye. I want you for a moment to see this picture. Kwa muda nataka uone picha hii. Moses is busy at Mount Sinai. Musa yuko na shughuli nyingi katika mlima Sinai. Hearing and receiving from God. Akisikia na kupokea kutoka kwa Mungu. And God, you know there is a communication between him and God. Nakumbuka kwamba kuna mawasiliano kati yake na Mungu. While Moses is busy receiving the tablets of stone. Wakati Musa ana shughuli za kupokea mawe yale ambayo alikuwa ameandikwa. Aaron down here is busy making another god. Bas Aaron naye hapa chini ana shughuli za kutengeneza miungu. He was so busy manufacturing and making one. Alikuwa na shughuli nyingi za kuvumbua na kutengeneza nyingine. I like the song we sing here. Napenda wimbo ambao tuwaimba hapa. There is no other god. Hakuna mungu mwingine. You know the song that talks about the gods that are made with the hands of man. Mwajua wimbo ule ambao unasema unaenda kuhusu miungu ambayo yanatengenezwa kwa mikono ya binadamu. I submit to you today. Nawaambieni leo. An idol is what is made with the hands of man. But apparently what that which is made by man has no power to sustain the man. I already hate it. I already hate it. You make us something, you polish it, you bow before it, but it will never ever man sustain you. Unatengeneza kitu na kisafisha unatengeneza vizuri lakini akiwezi kukudumisha you speak to it is as dead as dead it can be basi unakinenea kinikana koma ni kitu kimekufa kiski he can keep you akiwezi kukudumisha so imagine an idol hebu waza sanamu it could be either from a stone or even an old piece of wood somehow which was cut by mistake a piece of wood basi aweza kuwa ni kutokana na mawe ama kipande cha chambao ambao ama mtu ambao ulikatwa mahali kimakosa maybe a left over kitu ambacho ni masalio tu yet a man can pick it ili hali bin adam anaweza kitoa and carve it and make it akichonge na akitengeneze and call it a god na kiite mungu and start to worship it na anza kuabudu back to my text The Lord God said to Moses, I have seen these people, they are stiff naked people. Now my wrath is burning hot against them. And God said, I'm about to do the most unexpected. I will consume them. But for you Moses, because I know your purity. I know your heart. Today Minister Habat was showing us the heart of Moses. So God is saying there is an exception here. For you Moses. As my anger burns hot among us these people out of you i will make a great nation how god was going to do it it was not a problem but though minister habat you preach so good about moses i look at his father's heart when god said i will destroy these people i'll consume them Moses steps in as a father begin to plead with God Lord why, why would you anger 
These are just kids. They are just babies. They are being foolish and stupid. You remember how you brought them out of the Egypt with great power and might. If I were Father Moses, I would have said, God, don't consider destroying them tomorrow. Do it now. Now is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice as Moses. And I will be glad in it. And I will be singing all over the place, hallelujah to God. I'll be checking the time, God, Father, have you not destroyed? destroy them. Let's do it now. But Moses is such a father. But he starts to give an oh God. If you destroy them, what would the Egyptians say? I will say, I don't care. They are not my business either. Kill them and don't kill them tomorrow and don't kill them at night. Kill them in the afternoon so I can see how you kill them. Thank God we are not Moses. I love Moses, Pastor, and when we get to heaven, I want to see Moses. My man is Joshua. That's my man. Moses, I will say, hi, Father Moses. As, as I go to greet Joshua. Me, I like Joshua, he's my type. Joshua sees an angel coming. He says, stop right there. Number one. Are you for us or against us? Are you for us or against us? Hey, hey, hey. The angel said quickly, I'm an angel. Give you a, show me your ID. I love, I love Joshua. He's my man. But this bleeding with stupid people, oh, who, what will the Egyptians say? Say what? People want to say something. People say something. It doesn't matter how good you are, people will say something. It doesn't matter how bad you are, people will say something. If you lose weight, they will say something. If you put on weight, they say something. If you are too short, they say something. If you are too tall, they say something. People have a way of saying something. You are not people's opinion. You are God's opinion. Doesn't matter what people say. Even if you do what people are entitled to their opinion. Everybody has an opinion about you. I told people in Germany on Sunday. I said, you know in Europe there are so many suicidal. There's so many people committing suicide. Because of depression. Some of the nations, like the Scandinavian nations, and I'm sure they are watching me now. They don't know what it means to be poor. They are protected by their governments. If you don't have a job, they give you an apartment. They make sure you have a television. You don't buy a fridge or a freezer because they're in the house. They give you bedrooms. Somebody delivers a newspaper at your house. They make you live well. Unlike other nations that have debts. These nations has kept money for their citizens. They know how to protect their citizens. When my baby was born, you know that you are given a maternity leave for one year and then your husband is given another six, eight months. Who does that in Kenya? You are given 
Your pregnancy is not my problem, you work or you. <laughs> That's why we have so many children born in the bus stops. I'm not asking you where you are born. It doesn't mean that you are more smart because you are born in a maternal home. Your arrival is not a, an issue of discussion here today. How, when, and where? Vipi na lini na ni wapi? You have an ID. <sighs> so in these countries, Though they are so blessed, if you look at the rating, they have the highest when it comes to suicidal. So I said, I told the people in Germany, these Africans you see, how Africa they will never commit suicide. They love life. <laughs> And the Africans are guessing at these ones, they hate to hear they will die. For an African to hang himself like this, check something is so wrong. And I was saying, yet, yet you people, you should just, I'm tired of life. I stole them. Even when we are so poor. We are so excited for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Kenyans. We are always excited for tomorrow. When almost tomorrow doesn't give us hope, we believe in hope itself. And we begin to hope. Oh, come on, give God praise. Come on, Kenya, we are a great nation. We are great people. We are hopeful. We believe in greatness. And that's why we believe none of us will die premature death. We shall live to the full of life to see the goodness of God and to declare the words of the Lord. Give God a hand of thanks. So now, Moses is negotiating about God killing people. And he's telling God, if you kill them, you will look so bad you'll not even believe it. Imagine. <laughs> and now, Moses continue with his stories. And say, you know the Egyptians? They will say, you brought them down to the Mount Sinai to kill them and to them and to wipe them from the face of the earth. Pastors, I admire you and I thank God for you because of the pastoral heart. Thank God a pastor is not an evangelist neither a prophet. <laughs> pastor Peter, can I tell on you a bit? You know, Pastor Peter is such a pastor. You know, when we were sitting doing this construction, anytime I walked into their meeting, Pastor Peter quite didn't like me to be in their meeting, but I squeezed myself to be in their meeting. And I noticed every time, Mrs. Mahil, I walk into that meeting. Remember, Pastor Peter had a habit of telling me, Ikara ha mamwe, Ikara ha. No, no, but I'm not going to be in the meeting. I'm not going to be in the meeting. Wait until the people given some contracts start to speak. I said, Pastor Peter, are you serious that this woman is lying to you and you are listening? But somebody will start to cry. And Pastor Peter will tell them, wait for me outside. Another Indian came 
said, oh, remember Andres? Oh, I got your work, but you people, you don't, you, 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 you don't even know what you want. After your project, I have done about f- other five malls. I said, stop! This is not a shopping mall. It's a house of God. I, I told Pastor Peter, can this man live right now? With his pastoral heart, he tells the Indian, hey, wait for me here outside of the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate Pastor Peter. <laughs> I said, this is not a shopping mall. It's the house of God. What <laughs> are you talking about? <laughs> so every time I walked into their meetings, they all looked at each other. When somebody wanted to open their mouth to lie, I said, that man is lying. Are you sure? I was allergic to one. He was on the water side. I used to say, Pastor Peter, can he come afterwards? Then Pastor Peter with that pastor, go here. Me and my sister to Moses. And my other brother is Peter, Apostle Peter. Peter, Peter here, a bad day is coming. You better prepare yourself and have a sword. Literally, he gets a sword. And he's thinking to his thinking, a sword must be for some job. Father Moses, we bless God for you. That's why we are so, there is diversity. None of us is like the other. None of us can be complete without your brother. You are patient, you are kind, you are loving. There are people who are rough. But we need each other. Tell your neighbor, we, I need you in my life. Maybe you are sitting next to a Moses. Or next to a Pastor Peter there. <laughs> and Pastor Peter tells me, Mom, don't chase this man because he will go with our money. I say, let him go with the money. <laughs> he cannot hold us at ransom because so he doesn't go with the money. I know somebody is praying for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By now you know I'm not Moses. I'm Joshua. Say what you are saying and say it quickly and short. <laughs> to the point. If you say you are an angel, I ask, where is your ID? So you must say, made in heaven. So what am I saying? Moses reminded, as he was pleading with God, he reminded God about his covenant that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Of multiplication. Multiplication of his descendant like the stars. He said, God, you promised them that you will give them a land as an inheritance. And now when Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, filled with the very presence and the very glory of God as as Pastor, as Minister Hubbard was preaching to us. You cannot meet with God and remain the same. I don't care who you are. Once you meet with God, he, he has power to transform and change you. So Moses is coming. On both hands, he's cutting the two tablets of stones 
which are written on both sides. And I love verse number six. The tablets were the work of God. Why does the Bible specifically say that it was the work of God? Lest when we study the Bible, we think Moses made these tablets. Moses did not do the, the tablets of stone. And neither did they come from an IT company. They were handwritten by God and graved on a stone. So, so Moses, they are coming down with Joshua. Are you, not, are you noting something? Ministers, in your life, God will give you a Moses. A Moses will have a Joshua and Aaron. Amen. So the, uh, the Bible says that they were coming down with Joshua. You imagine Joshua accompanying Moses to the mountain and the holiness of God, the glory of God, yet Joshua is on the side to take care and minister to the men of God. On the other hand, he has a little devil who is creating and making God to overthrow his government. As they were going down, the Bible says there was a great noise. They could hear the shouting is shouting is in the camps. They were like shouts of victory. Shouting of songs. Songs of either defeat or something. They cannot define if people were crying or shouting or singing. But as they approach to the camp, Moses looked and saw a golden calf and people dancing around it. Moses' eyes opened. He could not believe what he saw. He is already judging God for saying he was going to consume and destroy the people. But God had seen what Moses had not seen. So he saw the people and the calf. And the singing and the dancing and the worship, people bowing before it. Can I surprise you? The same father Moses, he overreacted and made a wrong decision. You know, you know there are people who boast about their anger. Ah, if I get upset, Mimi ni kikasirika. Kwa, kwa who are you? People can boast for things that are totally, you know. If I get upset, what on a jivunia silayo na Even my dog at home knows. Atambo angu jumbani ana juwa ni kikasirika. Have you seen people get upset until dogs take a retreat very fast? So the more the moment Moses overreacted, he made a wrong decision. Moses, Moses threw the very thing he was carrying in his hands from God. The, the, the Bible says he cast it down to Mount Sinai, the foot of Mount Sinai. Now he's not pleading with God. He did not stop right there. He came down to the golden calf. He burnt it with fire. And that which was not burnable, he he knew how to do it. Because remember, this image was pure gold. 
And gold is very friendly to fire because gold is purified through fire. When Moses saw something shining, glittering, the Bible doesn't say he used a hammer, but I believe he got something like a hammer and pounded this thing and leveled it flat out to a powder. That anger gave him energy and strength to do extraordinary things. After making this a powder, he scattered it into the water. Can you believe he told the people to drink it? Hey, this punishment now here, brother Moses, is a bit too much. They were told, they were told this thing you made, this you were going to drink. She, wa she wanted God. You will wear him and you will drink him. This one. So it was mixed and it was passed like a communion. They couldn't even shut their eyes or blink. So they had to drink it. What a punishment. When Aaron saw the anger of Moses, and you cannot believe, he comes to tell Moses, Moses, Please understand me. Let me tell you part of the story. The people you left with me told me. Isn't this common that when Adam was asked, Adam, Adam said, God, actually, it's not me. It's the baby girl you gave me the other day who told me we do this. I told you, leadership is about responsibility and accountability. I'm coming to an end now. So, where the people, you see something here. Moses, Aaron says, the people asked me and they told me that I make them a God who will go before them. Can you get this? First of all, where are they going? Do, know, do they know the way? These people had never been that way before. They had not seen Canaan with their eyes. They had no idea what it was. I prophesy today. Watch when God takes you to the land that you have not known. Watch when God blesses you with a business that you have never done before. Never ever make it an idol. Because the day you make it an idol, you will eat it and drink it. Finally, we see the judgment. I spoke on grace the other time. But we preach too much on grace, like God doesn't ever think about judgment. Yes, judgment comes. As I finish, look at this for a few minutes, then we are done. See, they have drunk now. Already yes, they have drunk. Yeah? Now Moses stands at the camp. Like an authority. Like an anointed man of God. He stands like the voice of God. He tells the people. Every one of you. On the Lord's side. Come. If I were there. I would have been the first one to drop at his feet. But remember, these people have drunk. 
the kagode <laughs> so they are not going to go anywhere but thank God for the sons of Levite the Levi, the Levi, because they gathered themselves together with to Moses you cannot imagine the next thing Moses Musa. he commanded he gave a decree to every man the sons of Levi to put their sword on one side and to go into that camp and kill every man to kill his own brother his buddy his neighbor and the sons of Levi did as the Moses had commanded them. And that very day, it was such a, such a bloody action, 3,000 people fell and they died. That day, the Bible says, every man opposed his own son and his own brother. I'll teach that on another day. A time comes when you, when you, you a child of God. You will stand in your own family and oppose them and tell them, I love God too much to agree with your nonsense. And tell them, I'm not going to agree with you. We cannot be men pleasers. You do things that you don't believe lest anybody takes offense. I will not compromise my faith. No, no, no. No, no. I'm not compromised. I want my family to know my belief and my faith and my principles. I loved my father because even when he was not saved, he used to defend and fight for my faith. He will, tell my, he will tell me in front of my brothers, Ah, why you not think I'm going to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of so he protected and defended my faith in God. We need to take a stand. Stand your ground for your salvation. Let your family members know whom you believe and what you believe. Don't be a Christian and compromise your faith and a bad day you repent. That one you don't spill. Anything that does not align itself with the word of God. I'm not going to worship it. I will not embrace it. After this harsh statement, the Bible says later Moses consecrated the people. And they journeyed to the Canaan land. Look at this. God disqualified these people. After being given wealth, they were tested. I say in this house as a prophet, after much has been given to you, are you going to pass the test? Don't look at me like that. I'm asking as a prophet. Are you gonna, because you have to be tested. When you are tested, are you going to pass? May God help us. I prophesied about the blessing that is coming. And you watch, God has said, yes, the blessing is coming. 
But can we handle the blessings of God? Without making small idols. God gives you a car. That car becomes an idol. You don't go to church because you are polishing the car. You don't go to service anymore because you are, you are seeing your, your mechanic is never free. He but, works for Toyota Kenya, but on Sunday he's free. And you are fixing a music system and you want it done professionally. So Sunday is the day you polish you look. How polish? Does it become your idol? Remember your idol will never sustain you. Only God will keep you. If I'm preaching God good, put your hands together and appreciate the Lord. One of the days, because now I have done, I'm done, I'll teach on verse number five. It has uh, technical team, would you, would you put verse number five for me on, uh, on uh, actually verse number 20, 29, verse number 29. Okay, Moses, he consecrated the people, okay, not that particular one. Okay, listen, let me, let me finish by saying this. One of the days, I want specifically to teach on something. Right in this verse. Before people actually left to go to Canaan, God actually instructed Moses. Let the people remove their ornaments. Watch what you every ornament they are going to remove it and the Bible says after they had removed their monuments they met with God and the, the, there was a manifestation of the glory of God and after that you see the Bible recording that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Church, a time of distinction, a time of separation comes. When the tear and the wheat will be separated. And remember that God is so good in doing it. My question as we stand. Will you pass that test? Stand up everybody. I believe. Na amini. I want to teach on that particular verse. When Moses told the people, remove your ornaments. We have too many ornaments that hinder God from meeting with us. Ornament is the show off, the bring brings. But a time comes when God says, remove your bring brings, I want to see how you look like. Thank you. Thank you because you got it. Thank you because you got it. Put it back. Put it back again. Put it. Yeah, there you go. I want you to read that with me. Just read it with me. Thank you, technical. Take it back. The ornament. Come on, read it with me. For the Lord. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. God, he 
himself says that I may know how to decide what I'm going to do with you. I don't have time to speak on the ornaments that take the place of God. But I want you to know that worship has come on the stage. And did you get the picture about the idol? An idol is not only a piece of wood. An idol is anything that goes before God. I heard the Lord asking me what goes ahead of me, of you. Today, what goes ahead of you? Is it your money? Is it fame? Is it your business? Is it your family? Is it your children? What is this that goes before you? Because that will be your God. That will give you direction. That will be your everything. Today, I come to God to say, Lord, I will not allow anything to go before me. Only you, God, will go before me. Raise your hand to the God of heaven. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Let's check our lives everywhere before we walk out. Begin to check your own life. Come on, let's take stock now. This is before the conference. We're going to have a great time. Who goes ahead of you? What goes ahead of you? That is what you start to worship. What goes? Preachers, is it your congregation? Is it your money? What goes ahead of you? Come on, church. God told me, go tell my people. Go ask them what goes ahead of them. Open your mouth and begin to speak. Oh, I will not have any other God. God, you will go ahead of me. It is only you, God. You know my destiny. You know my destination. I refuse anything. Any idol, any image. In the form of God. Made by the hands of men to go ahead of me. I refuse God to go ahead of me. Silver, names, come on, open your mouth. Let's begin to check our lives. If we have any idols, remember Rachel could not enter because of the gods because she carried her father's gods might you be here today and you have carried your family gods today in the name of Jesus the Lord has commanded me we burn every 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 altar every idol that we have raised for ourselves come on somebody oh check your life take stock oh shakata my God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. I check myself today. Oh God. Is there anything that I have put value that is more powerful than you in my life? Lord God. What can separate us from the love of God? Is it to be loved? Is it to be hated? Is it the things we have? Is it the things to come? Oh, Robo Shekata Rabo Shanda. Serebeketa Rabo Shanda. 
Make a prayer, everybody in this house. Check if you have an idol. Your houses should not be an idol. Your car should not be your idol. Your millions in the bank should not be your idol. Your land, your property cannot be an idol. What goes ahead of you today? Oh God. Today we want to take authority and power to push everything behind us. Anything that takes the place of God, we will push it behind us. We will push it behind us. I refuse to drink it. I refuse it to be grinded to powder. And I drink it. Because if I drink it, I will surely die. I choose today to do like the sons of Levi to run to God. I run to you today. I run to you today. I run to you today. So that I will not be ashamed. I run to you. So that I will not be ashamed. Pray with me for a minute. Pray with me for a minute. Pray with me for a moment. Pray with me for a moment. If you have not been tested, you will be tested and tried. But are you going to pass? You will be given the very thing you love. But are you going to keep it or is it going to keep you? I refuse the idols. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, God is speaking to us. We are about to host nations in three, in two, three weeks from now. We are about to host nations in this place shortly in a few weeks. We are about to host the president of the Republic of Kenya. The deputy president. The parliamentaries. The senators. The governors. governors But in our lives do we have anything God can accuse us for? Do we have any idol? so that today we can say Lord in Karen we have raised up an altar for Jehovah that nations will come and meet with our God today we strip ourselves of every ornament every ornament everything that makes us feel on top of this world. Anything that takes the place of our God. We strip ourselves of that thing. In the name of Jesus. Say a prayer for a moment. One more minute. My Bible. Let's say a prayer. Say a prayer for a moment. Why do I feel like we need to pray? Why do I feel like we need to pray? I want you to open your mouth. Bless God for the things that he's about to give you. And I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I will never exchange you. With anything single thing that you give to me. I will not worship idols. I will only worship you because you are my God. I will not give any person 
The place of God. God is speaking to us. This is so prophetic. Just one minute. Before we walk out of here, I don't want us to walk out of here and go and die. I want us to walk out of here and go and live. My God, my God, oh my God, we push every idol away. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Robo Shalabakasana. Come on, reject your father's gods. Say no to your father's gods. God is taking you to the land of promise. You cannot be enter with idols. Oh, Robo Kosoto Robo Shanda. Jesus. Oh, Robo Shakata Rabasana. Robo Shanda. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, our God go ahead of us. Even Lord as we house the internationals, go ahead of us. Take your place in this sanctuary. We strip ourselves of every idol. The praises of men. Oh in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God, we choose to stand on the Lord's side. Today in this house, I decree we shall stand on the side of the Lord. This house, this family, this great people will stand on the side of God. Sarabaganda, Sarabarabo Shanda Rabosai. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh God, we make a decision today <laughs> to stand on the side of the Lord. Oh, 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 we see. Oh, me go kimbili, ewe bwana, ni si ai bike mi lele o. Me go kimbili, ewe bwana, ni si ai bike.
Do that chorus one more time. God is at work in this place. I'm done, but let's do this chorus one more time. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Amen. You may put your hands together for the Lord, the King of Kings. Minister Habak, was the title of your message Transformation of the Soul? Might God be saying something to us that we are not getting? Because we were told that transformation. Change. Change. May God help us. Oh, we had several. I have so many testimony of the babies that have been born as a result of the miracle service we did last year on babies. I know uh, the lady here. Uh, I know Jacinta, you don't bring the baby. I know Jacinta, you wanted to show us the baby. The baby is three, ba- three months old, born f- as a miracle baby from that service we had. This is from one of our online viewers, one of our uh, members online. Her name is Beatrice and she lives in Finland. She decided uh, to go and see a doctor after waiting for a baby and she couldn't conceive. And Beatrice wants fam family to know. She will never forget the day she made a visit to the doctor. And the doctor looked at her eyes and said, I wish I could turn back the crock for you. And the doctor said to her, You will never have a baby. All right. The doctors have given their opinion. Beatrice broke in tears, she says, but she believed in God. On 14th, when we did the service, she also decided to do the service in Finland in her home. She followed the instruction that I had given that you bring something that symbolizes and will stand for you that you want to have a baby. So already she had bought baby clothes. 
kupata mtoto. Beatrice was careful to time the service as the service was starting. Basi Beatrice alikuwa mwangalifu kuanza na ibada ile wakati baada And she stood with us in the gap online. Na akasimama nasi katika pengo mtandaoni. On 24th of this month she received God blessed her with a bouncing baby boy. Basi tarehe 24 mwezi huu Mungu amembariki na mtoto wa kupendeza mtoto wa kiume. Beatrice from Finland God bless you. Beatrice kutoka Finland Mungu akubariki. The team, Pastor Pauline, um, Teacher Robert, Minister Joshua, the leadership of the worship team. Thank you for putting the worship team together. This is from uh, charity, and charity, if you are here, you don't have to come. Charity had been diagnosed with breast cancer. She has gone through chemotherapy. chemotherapy. And a time came and the doctors told her she had become resistant to chemo treatment. Be, uh, um, Charity was invited for the worship service, worship experience. She came with her three friends. Before they came, they joined hands. That I will be able to call her out by her need or her by name. And they stood right there and believed God for a miracle. After the worship service, I decreed that I have seen uh, breast tumors, breast cancer tumors disappear. They started praising God. Here is her report from the doctors. Oh, come on, give God a praise. Oh, give God a shout of praise. What no man can do, God is able to do it for us. Oh, come on, one more time, make a share. I believe Na amini. worship has the power of worship Wabudu, ibada ya ibada. Would, cause, would cause cancer to burn. There was no hope for charity. Because her body could not take any chemo. After eight chemos, her body resisted. Look what the Lord has done. One more time, we bless God. That's why fame family we cannot allow any ornaments to go before us. We want God to go before us. The God who heals cancers. The God who opens wombs. That is going to be our God. Oh, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Raise your hand and just give God thanks for the service today. Please take something home. Please take something. Please go and read Exodus chapter 31 and 32. Take something with you home. Carry something with you to the house. Take something. Take something. Take something home. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord watch over you. are going out and you are coming in. The sun will not smite thee by the day nor the moon by the night. I decree no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. The Lord shall be your God. The Lord shall go ahead of you. 
He shall go behind you and beside you. He will be your God. I speak protection over your family and your lives. May the Lord preserve your soul till the day of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Just before you say the grace, is there anybody in this house? You came to worship in this service. But you have never said yes to Jesus. You've never given your life to Jesus. You've never said, Lord, you are my Savior, you are my if you are there and you know you are not born again and you want to make this decision, raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Check, check, check. Do we have anybody? You're not saved. If I don't see any hand, we're good. Look at your neighbor and tell them goodness and mercy. And please, before you say the grace, remember every Saturday. Every Saturday, 10 from, from 10 to 1 to 1230. We're coming to push in prayer. If you need to help us do any work and you're not in any department, please see our pastoral team. We need a lot of help. Now you, can, now you can say the words of grace to somebody. Surely stop there, stop there. Three people, teacher Robert, goodness and mercy. Grace and mercy. Remember next month. Do we have any dressing code? We want to look sharp and we want can we wear black and white and, and, and wear black hat shoes and, and can we wear black and white? Or all white? Or white? And black and white? Alright. So second Sunday. Now, 
So our dressing code will be either white or black and white. In a senator, my brother, are you can do together? Not rather to dancing. Black and white. All right. Okay, see you next month. And remember that all our partners are coming. And it will not be favor. Whosoever comes first will come in the building. When the building is full, we will have tents outside. God bless you. God bless you. I love you.